Hello and welcome to episode 14, February 26, 2021 of Ma Conversa. Today we have Carmen Sita. Hi. She is my new neighbor. So we both live in Hillmar, California, but I'm going to go ahead and give the floor to Carmen Sita. And can you please let us know where you are originally from? Because I know you're not originally from uh, Central California. So can you talk a little bit about where you were born and then a little bit about where you live now? Okay, so um, I'm Carmen Sita. I was uh, born in San Francisco and uh, I was not raised there. I was just born there and uh, raised in, out in the country here in Central Valley. Um, I've moved quite a lot. Um, I've been just about everywhere here. Um, from there, uh, I was uh, raised uh, more with my Portuguese side of the family. I am half Portuguese, half Mexican. My father is Mexican. That's awesome. So you speak Spanish and Portuguese very well. I've heard you speak Portuguese numerous of times, and I'm always impressed on how well you speak Portuguese. And that is because your grandma always spoke Portuguese with you, right? So you were just from the get-go, always knew Portuguese. So I'm guessing that was your first language then that you learned, right? Correct, it was the first. And then maybe your second was Spanish, then your third was English. So I think it's amazing that you're fluent in three languages. So that kind of leads me to say that you not only sing in Portuguese, but you sing in English and in Spanish too, right? Correct. So I think it's cool that you're kind of from my neck of the woods. I'm from San Jose. You're from San Francisco originally, but raised here in the Valley. And you, to me, are, when we talk about, like, our animals and everything, you totally remind me of a country girl because you got it all. Seriously, you got the cats, you got the dogs, and you are just a number one animal lover. Isn't that true? Yes. Yes. So me and you connect very well with the kitties and the doggies. We love it all. And can you uh, talk to us a little bit about your music. Can you let us know when did you start singing? When did you start playing guitar? And just a little bit about your music in general. Okay. Uh, singing wise, I always sing since I could talk. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I would, um, I was uh, never shy when I was younger. Um, That's I was, great. I was always with grandma and uh, I would always play music and, and it wasn't Portuguese music in the beginning. It was um, Spanish. Oh, wow. And English. So it was a lot of Selena going on. Oh, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> it was a lot of um, Ana Gabriela. Uh, Love her. One of my favorite mariachi songs is actually Ana Gabriela song. Antonio Solis. Uh, Marco Antonio Solis. Any, any of those, any of those, it was a lot of that. And I... Um, I would go up on the tables and I'd sing and sing oh and it would be God. on a repeat. It would be <laughs> always on a repeat. And my grandma, I would always tell her, Ababa Palmas, and my grandma would get so tired. She'd be like, oh, Are you yet. tired yet? Are you done? She goes, No. <laughs> <laughs> Poor grandma. That is so cute. Honestly, I wish I would have met you when we were little kids because I think we would have gotten along. I had a big big obsession with Selena at some point in time. I was probably like six or seven or even eight. Um, and I was obsessed with her and I had a little Selena cassette. Like back then we didn't have CDs, right? So I had a Selena cassette and I would play that thing on repeat daily all the time mm -hmm. to the point that I drove my mom totally crazy with that thing. And so uh, one fine day, it, I always love to tell the story. One fine day, it miraculously disappeared. Uh, she <laughs> said that it broke. <laughs> but um, then, yeah. Um, <laughs> so then years, and I'm talking like whew, light years later, I found the cassette in the garage, like behind a drawer in a, in a crazy abyss. And I was like, what? It's a miracle. Yeah, I was like, mom, <laughs> you said this was broken. And she was like, huh? She didn't remember that story. So yeah, long story short, I was a totally huge Selena fan, still am. And actually me and Carmencita, we have, we both have Smule accounts. And one of the first duets that we did together was Como La Flor. 
and Kumala La Flor is one of Selena's, one of the most popular songs that she has. And after that, we went on to do a duet for Uma Casa Portuguesa. So that one was amazing. And so what age did you start doing Favu and performing to an audience on a stage? And does it have to be necessarily Portuguese? Like when was the first time you ever went on a stage? A stage? I, the first time I went on the stage, it was for the talent show for my high school. How cute. And what did you sing there? Selena. Selena. Okay. So you started literally singing Selena, mariachi music. And then when was the first time you sang Fadush? Because that's actually how I know you is because you sing Fadu music as well. So when did you start to sing Fadush? It was some sometime shortly after um, I had the, I got really shy in my teen years and I was really um, unsure whether I should uh, sing in front of people. I was really nervous. I don't know why, yes. but I was. So my first turtle was the talent show. And from the talent show, um, uh, there's a story behind the fudge. Uh, I I actually got introduced more to the fudge when my uh, Tia Anton came from Canada, he oh, wow. brought a couple of CDs that were Amalia and other, and other singers. And um, he gave it to my grandmother as a gift. And nice. I like to listen to a whole bunch of music. So I started seeing those discs and the CDs and I decided to play them. And some songs, you know, piqued my interest. And mm -hmm. I was listening to them. I was learning them. And one day I just went downstairs. My grandma had like this three-story house in Lockdown. That's oh, where wow. we were at at the time. That's like a mansion. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's a three level. But uh, when I went downstairs, you know, I closed myself up in my room. Like, it doesn't matter. Uh, my whole life was basically school and get home, close myself in either. I have two bed. I had two bedrooms because I was just living with grandma. Wow. All mm -hmm. my high school year. And I had one room where I slept in and I had my little, my CD player my little boom box. And then the <laughs> room next door is where I had my, my TV, my uh, desktop uh, computer, uh, my piano. And that was my music room. Oh, that's awesome. Was uh, your desktop computer the AOL Instant Messenger days? Do you remember those days? AOL, yes. I remember, <laughs> I remember it playing, you know. Ding, 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 ding. Oh my God, I miss those days. Everything was a little bit more complicated, but then a little bit more simple at the same time. Yeah, I had the MySpace thing. Oh my God, dude, yes, MySpace. That was the, that was the thing. I don't even know, but I used to do like coding. And I used, well, we all used to do coding, right? And to do the backgrounds and everything. Yeah. If you asked me to do that now, I'd be like, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing. But, um, <laughs> oh, to be 16 again, right? Mm -hmm. um, but today I'm very, very happy because we have live music. And this is the first time ever for a Ma Conversa that we do live music on air. So today, Carmencita will sing us a fado. And she's going to sing us Lively Mom. So go ahead whenever you're ready. Okay. It's a little rusty. No worries. I haven't practiced in a few days. No worries. Let's see. Deus 
Good job. Oh my goodness. That just made me instantly calm. <laughs> Literally put me to dreamland. I feel very tranquil. Beautiful, beautiful voice. And I always tell you, your voice reminds me of an angel. It's very angelic. I really love your voice. And so you play the guitar very, very well. When did you start playing guitar? I think that's so cool that you can just accompany yourself. That's fantastic. It was the beginning started after high school, um, before I was playing piano first. Got it. Okay, so you already knew music from piano. So when you started to learn guitar, it wasn't super difficult because you already knew the notes and everything, right? So it's a little different. It's a little bit different, it's right? A little different because the chords, uh, the chords are 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 a tad different than than the the keyboard. The keyboard you have your, you know, you start with your C, middle C, and then go C D you know, all the way to A again. Got it. So it's a lot different, but um, the transition, it was, uh, it's, it's a little difficult from reading the actual piano notes to guitar notes. Oh, I see. A big difference. Oh, okay, okay. But see, even, I'm always learning. Yeah, but even in high school, um, I the only reason why I took uh, piano classes was because I already played piano without reading the notes. It was my what? ear. Okay, okay. So when you were a child, you started playing piano, and you literally just did it by ear, and you learned some songs. And I started the key for the. I so that's how I started with the piano, and then from the guitar was the same way. I actually learned the notes and stuff to play by myself. Nobody taught me. Oh my God, that's very hard. Did you have those little cheat sheets that you get online that say like, okay, put your finger on one, two, three, or you literally just had just did it by ear type of a thing. Uh, I did a lot of it by ear. Now okay. I'm like fascinated <laughs> because I tried to learn guitar and let me say, I cannot do anything by ear at all. And uh, it was hard for me to understand the music. Um, so I would do the cheat sheets, which they tell you where to put your fingers on the guitar. So it tells you everything how to do it. So like the one, two, three, four, five, like I'm telling you. I do it either by ear or if I see somebody else play the note, then I'll, I'll mimic it. Okay. Yeah. That I cannot do at all, like whatsoever. So anyone that can play instruments, I definitely commend them. I appreciate you guys, all the musicians of the world, because it is not an easy thing and it requires lots of hard work, lots of dedication. 
So you play piano and guitar. Those are the only two instruments, correct? I da I dab just a tiny bit in a, in in another instrument, but it's it's not. What is it? You must tell us. Accordion. Accordion. Very very cool. That one is also very complicated because you got to be doing a lot of different things at the same time. Not only are you doing this movement, but you're like doing this movement. And there's something else, right? There's three components of that. So it's the air thing moving up and down. It's the buttons. And then there's the key. And there you go. So it's like, if you can play that thing, I feel like you can play anything. <laughs> I played just one song and it was actually um, my father, um, when he was younger, uh, his family, they all play instruments. And oh, wow. Sing. And they had a little group um, where they played in the, in the garage. And, oh my God. Uh, so cool. My uncle actually was the one that was messing with the key with the, the accordion and the keyboard. And one day he played a, a piece of a song on the, on the accordion. And from there I was listening to it and I really liked it. Yes. So after they were on their break from the music, I grabbed the accordion and I mimicked everything that I heard that he played. No that way. Yeah. What did they do when you did that? Well, they, they were talking and then they heard me do that and they're like, okay. Did that just happen right now? Yeah. They're like looking uh, at each other. It was the other. same thing with the keyboard too. They were playing, um, he was trying to get a certain melody down and it was actually um, hard for him to do it because he was like yeah. messing up. But yeah, I saw him what he was supposed to do. And then just instantly after they were done with the break, I just did the correct keys, rhythm, what they wanted. That is crazy to me. Honestly, that is a gift. That is a very beautiful gift. So not only is Carmen Sita very talented at singing in Spanish, Portuguese, and English, she's very talented. Now we've learned on um, the piano, the guitar, and now she is dabbling in accordion. So I love to hear that because in the future, down the line, after this COVID's all done with, um, hopefully, I would really, and I've already said this on the air before, I would really love to have a kind of ball group of only females, only females that are in the assumed and meshtraj, and only females being musicians. So accordion is actually one of the instruments that's very, 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 very hard to find um, females that play accordion, especially like in this area. I. I only know maybe one or two, and they're a few hours away from us now. Um, so yeah, I feel like the sky's the limit. Keep learning more instruments because we need more female musicians out in the world. So anybody hearing me, we need more female musicians in the world. <laughs> um, so yes, it's been a big treat for me to have you here. And we could do an in-person interview now because we're literally uh, Hilmar neighbors now, which is a very cool thing. And I'm hoping that after this pandemic that we can actually sing Fathers Together and we could do our two duets that we did virtually. Hopefully we can do them in person for all of you guys one day. Um, but the sky is the limit, honestly. Um, we just need this COVID to go bye bye <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about the first experience you had singing fadu here in your town where you live and also can you just talk about um some more accomplishments because i know you sing overseas so i know you sing in the azores so can you talk a little bit about your experience with singing fadu here especially in the beginning and can you talk about your experience singing overseas so two things I started um, my my first uh, gig or show was an opening for um, Armanda Ajuda, and I forget the other gentleman's name. They were from back east. Oh, cool! And I did the opening show, and that was my first opportunity to actually sing. And I actually did um, uh, the Fadu um, along with some Fad Canson by Dos Pons. Um, I was actually intrigued and I used to sing her stuff too. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the reaction, nobody really knew me other than the actual presidents and certain people that had heard me uh, sing in Los Banos um, mm -hmm. that one time that I asked to uh, sing and I was given the opportunity. And from there, I got my first gig in Hilmar. Wow. So the, the Los Banos gig was not Fadu. It was like regular singing or, or what was the Los Banos one? It, it was, uh, I did 
I did, I think it was like two pods. Nice. And, okay. Uh, and one pod from Zoom. And that's okay. What I did. So some people already kind of saw you at that Los Banos event. And then they saw you again in Hillmar, but for the most part, nobody really had seen you before seeing, right? And then after that, that's when you just exploded and took off a little bit, right? Yeah, I had I had a lot of my openings um, was in here was here in Hillmar, mm -hmm. um, and like I said, that first gig I did um, Foy de Oche, Foy de Oche. And the, the, that was from Malia. I did Rodin's Khan, and then I did Canson um, Mar by Dos Pons. Fantastic. And the, I think it was Lusita na Passion. That's the other song that I Oh, wow. Sing. That's a very hard song to sing. And I, <laughs> I also think I did Patel Principal as well. Okay. Um, I think that's another one by Dos Pons. Oh, cool. So I did all those. And from there, I got invited the next year. And then that's when I did the opening show. Um, this was always on a Sunday. I did the opening show for Fernando Correa Marques. Wow. So I personally got to meet him. That's fantastic. That's wonderful. And then can you talk a little bit about your experience when you went to the Azores to sing? Because that must have been fantastic. I know that your grandma is originally from the Azores. So can you talk a little bit about that? I, um, I went a couple of years back. I think it was in 2015, 2015, 2016. That's when I went <coughs> my first time to the Azores. I actually mm -hmm. got an opportunity to go sing in St. Josh for their uh, festa. That's fantastic. It was in May. And uh, I got the I got the invite from uh, the president, uh, nice. Uj which was Uj Um And uh, I am related to one of the wives, Connie Machado, is my cousin. Such a small world. <laughs> so I went and I sang there, and I had an opportunity to sing in Pico. In nice. Madalena. I did not know about that. I thought only the San George one. So no, that's I, awesome. I went to Pico Madalena to go sing. And it's a whole 360, a whole different world. Whole oh, yes. different way of life. <laughs> oh, yes. Singing from midnight to, to six in the morning is a completely different festa than what we have here. We oh start here at eight, 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 eight at night or nine at night till 12, one o'clock in the morning. That's it. Yeah. Over there now, they're like, it's dark that <laughs> night. Dude, festa. honestly, um, like back then, I could hang like... 2015 area yeah I could hang all all night long all morning long whatever um but nowadays if that were to happen nowadays I probably need some rebels I need something in my life because this lady over here uh we are father moms okay we're the father mamas so I don't know about you Carmen Cita, but I go to bed pretty early so that I think it's just the, the American lifestyle that we have like, like Carmen Tita said, everything is basically done at midnight or one. So what, what can you do? Yeah. <laughs> they, specifically like St. George, they work, it's all agriculture. A lot of it's all agriculture. I mean, they have, um, they, they work have very more, hard. Yeah. Funny thing is they have more cows and than people? there than people. <laughs> Just kind of like Hillmar, right? <laughs> kind of like Hillmar. So they work all day and party all night and party all night and they still go to work and they still go to work after the party. And that uh, was me. That was me before. So that must have been my San George side coming out because my grandmother was from Manavel, San George. And uh, yeah, I could definitely do that back then. Um, like when I was 21, well, not even 21, when I was like 25, uh, I would go out every weekday. And even on Saturdays and Sundays, of course, right? Just any day. I didn't discriminate the day. Um, and yeah, so I would party hard and I would go to work the next morning. Every single time I never called out. So I'm very proud of that. <laughs> um, but anywho, back to you. So tell us a little bit, what was your favorite experience about singing in San George? And what was your favorite experience about singing in Pico? Uh, the, the yeah, they're both fantastic islands in their own in their own way. Um, they have special things about both of them, especially Peak. There's a lot of rocks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> didn't expect that. I know but, it's kind of like Hawaii. When you go to Hawaii, I don't know if you've ever been, but yeah. in the future when you go to Hawaii, it reminds me so much of Pigu because when I went to Pigu, I literally remember just the volcano rock everywhere, and that's literally Hawaii right there. So for Saint George, you liked what was it again? What was the uh, your favorite thing about Saint George? I liked, 
I liked how ugly about what everybody was. Yes, that's very sweet, different. right? Completely different from over here. Over They're here. very humble. They appreciate everything. That's how I feel, at least. But they're willing to get to know you and talk to you. Yes. And they always they say are. hi to you, even if they don't know you. Yes, that is true. And I've been noticed the same thing with Terceda. And that's why I love Terceda so much. Terceda is very, very dear to my heart. Not only because my husband's from Terceda, but um, in San Jose, most of all my friends, all my Portuguese friends, were all from Terceda. So um, I've always been around people from Terceda. And I just love the way that they are they they are very inclusive they are very um family orientated and, and culture that's, oriented and culture oriented and that's what i love they're very orgulous of their traditions and their culture and i definitely um i feel the same thing so i always got along with people from Terceda. i love them and then people from saint George are just so chill like you said they're laid back they're accepting their dos like they're sweet um humble to me is the first word that comes to my mind at least big for me was uh party place yes of course so i actually been to that festival of the madalena and i went to that before i even knew what a how to party <laughs> so i went there and i was very young like uh, 13 um but yes piku is definitely a party place i loved it a lot um, any plans to go to continent? Because my father is from Portugal. And I mean, I'm sure if you love fathers, just like me. So I'm sure that one of your dreams is probably to go to Portugal, to go to a father house and to sing some fathers, right? Of course. Yes. So I hope one day you definitely can do that. If I ever have the possibilities, I will definitely um, take with me. That'd be fantastic. But what are some of your future aspirations? We talked a little bit of what you've accomplished. So now what do you want to accomplish for the future? And you don't have to tell us all your, your ADVD secrets, but just give us a little, a little hint of what you want to do in the future. Uh, future, just, you know, uh, be able to just to sing for the community. I mean, whether it's Portuguese, American, Spanish, I just want to share Yes. And for me, uh, my dream is to be able to sing in different places that I've never been and yes. meet new people. So oh my gosh. I would love to travel. I've been to, like I said, I've been to the islands. I've been to Idaho to sing. I've been to Las Vegas and sing. Oh, I've never been to Vegas, never been to Idaho. That's for sure. So can you tell us a little bit about the Idaho and about the Vegas? Because I'm Idaho, curious. Idaho, I was... Uh, I think it was 18 and I went with the Papas Casa de Soch um, at the time. There it's was kind of no similar to Hilmar, right? Like that kind of community is kind of similar. Uh, we went to Biom. Biom, okay. So it's kind of agriculture, right? And um, I don't know, I've, I've researched a lot about Idaho because there was a point in time that I thought I wanted to live in Idaho. <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, it kind of reminded me of Hilmar from what I was seeing. Can you talk a little bit about that? I was, it was, um, it was different. I mean, Buell, obviously there's not, uh, especially where the hall was. There's yes. Not I've looked it houses. up on Google earth and there is not a lot of houses there. I looked it up on Google earth and I'm like, oh, so this is the Portuguese hall. But anyways, but, but <laughs> that's they fantastic. Had they have one. Yeah. They had a good crowd. Um, they, I went there to sing Fab, which I actually drove there from Gastini because I say wait what now you, you lost me so the night we, so when I went there I drove to Buell Idaho from Gastine because I had a do you see I my was, face right now <laughs> I went from the fest of the, so the so the night okay so let's let's put this in perspective okay so the night before the fest of the fest of Buell in mm -hmm. Idaho mm -hmm. I was singing in the Fest of Gestinish. Mm. So you had like back to back uh, gigs so, kind of thing. So after I do, so usually the fads uh, at that time it started, I think it was at nine and it ended at midnight. Okay. And from there, from midnight, I got my, I had everything already packed in the car and we drove from midnight all the way to Idaho. <laughs> I don't know why, but my heart skipped a beat. And how did that go? How did that road trip go? How many hours was that? It was exhausting. <laughs> all I know, yeah, all I, I know is I was imagine. lucky that I was able to sing at all because I was exhausted. I didn't sleep. 
Because you she... yourself were driving or you were a passenger? No, no. I, I was the passenger in the back. Okay, okay. But My still. My uncle drove, but it was a Unable to relax, right? No, 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 no. no. It, and it wasn't any rest. Um, when we got there, it was a matter of seeing the hall, uh, you know, meeting everybody, uh, finding a hotel somewhere, which was not easy. It and sounds then, like an adventure to me. <laughs> and then just relax in the hotel room maybe an hour, an hour and a half, and let's go sing. You know what, Carmen I would actually be down to do that road trip with you, but not if we had to sing on the same day. If we could do that road trip one day and then sleep and then sing the next morning or night, I think that would just be optimal. And I know that they do have events that are similar to ours because I was being nosy McGee on online and I saw that they do um, crab feeds there at the Idaho mm -hmm. Hall. They do Father Nights. They do Carnival. I even saw. I was like, what? So you guys, this is what fascinates me. And I found Carmencita, who also is a traveler, just like me. She loves adventure. She loves to travel, loves to meet new people, loves to see new faces and new places. So if Idaho has a beautiful Portuguese community, can you just imagine all the other states that we have yet to explore that have Portuguese halls and Portuguese communities? I mean, literally that's what's fascinated me throughout this whole pandemic is just the connections and where we are all over the United States and all over the world. Um, and having the internet, it's so easy to connect with you all. And I'm literally, begging for this COVID-19 to leave because I have the travel bug. It's itching me all over the place and I want to go. I just want to go wherever. It could be anywhere. It could be Antarctica and I'd be like, I'm down. I'm going. <laughs> but Carmen Sita, thank you so much for being here today on Ma Conversa. It has been a real treat with you. And like I said, this was the first, first time that I ever had live music performed on my show. So I'm very excited for that. And I hope that me and you can do a lot of things in the future. And I wish the best for you. You are very talented. Not only that, but you're very personable. You're a fun person and you deserve the world. So I appreciate your time and thank you again. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.